Welcome back, DJ Vic Vapor with you. Logic Pro 10 beginners course. So let's take a look at audio tracks. When you first start a project in Logic Pro 10 and you open it up, file, new, you're going to get this screen right here. And it's going to ask you do you want a software instrument, do you want an audio track, a drummer track, external MIDI, guitar, or bass track? It's asking you to decide which audio channel or track do you want to add to the program. On this one we're going to focus on audio and under the little triangle next to details if we open that guy up we get a little bit more information to organize. So on the left here we've got input currently it's set at input 1 output no output set. So input 1, if we open this box, it's going to give us no input, input 1, which is mono, input 2, which is mono, then input 1 and 2, which would be a stereo input. Bus would give us all the different bus channel options if we wanted to bus the information coming into a, and then surround, depending on your uh, audio card or audio source, um, I think you'd need 5 or 5 yeah, five input signals anyhow to do surround, so we're not going to really focus on that. So I'm going to go back to input one and leave it right there. Ascending, if we were to select ascending, that particular feature is if you want multiple tracks essentially in the project. So if I come down here and I put, say, four tracks in here, What's going to happen with ascending selected is input 1 would go to the first track and then the next three tracks would ascend um, according to the inputs on the back of my audio card. Each, each additional input on the back of my audio card would be um, assigned the next tracks in order. For now we're just going to stay with 1 and deselect that. We've got for the input one, we've got additional information down here. We can set up, currently I'm using the Soundflower for the uh, screen capture software as an output device, but I can go back to my audio card or, you know, built-in internal and things of that nature um, for output. For input, you can kind of do the same thing. I've got the uh, external audio card working for us right now. But I can select different built-in or whatever's whatever's plugged into the system will be identified here. So output kind of functions in the same exact way. We've got no output, output one and two, output mono, output one two. I am going to leave it as a stereo. We've got the bus option and again the surround option as well. We can send the uh, output out to a bus or in a surround setting. But we are going to stay with 1, 2 as a stereo. So we've got a mono input 1, output 1 and 2 to stereo, and ascending again uh, by selecting that will assign the back of the audio card. If you've got multiple uh, outputs on the back of the audio card, maybe some, I know some cards out there have 8, 12, 16 outputs, some of the higher end ones. Um, that's all options that would be available for you right here. And under the ascending you could click there and then dial in how many outputs you're going to function with and the program will uh, ascend through that. Input monitoring, kind of the same thing. The input monitoring, what that's going to allow you to do is if you have that guy selected, um, you'll see after the track's created, it will put an eye next to the uh, audio track and it will allow us to monitor the incoming signal without recording it, essentially hearing it you know, um, before it's actually uh, recorded into the program. So if we don't like it, we can change it and things of that nature. And then record enabled is going to give us the option of when the audio track is finally when we hit create, it's going to give us uh, the R for record enable for this audio track. So that is kind of the idea of when you're starting a project new, what you're going to be faced with and choices you need to make. So. 
again, most important thing is to have your input device and your output device selected. And it's kind of nice that I'm able to actually use two different options here instead of just one. So currently as an input device, I've got my audio card, my external audio card. And then the output device is currently set at the Soundflower 2 channel, which is working with our screen capture software for the tutorial. But again, if I wanted to change that, I can do that right here. Input and output. So let's go ahead and hit create. And I think I'll go ahead and leave that guy selected just to show you. And there's our audio track. So I, I just went ahead and <laughs> took the uh, input monitoring off because it was immediately kind of looping that sound and allowing me to hear my voice before my voice come into the program. But there's the record enabled, the solo, mute, and the uh, input monitoring selections. So and let's move on to the next lesson and take a little bit closer look at these guys.